I like food that makes me feel big. So like tiny hamburgers and tiny things like that. Yeah. Uh, I eat my, all my dinners with the pickle fork. Hey everybody, I'm Mike Levy. We're back for another field test video and this is Salsa's all new 140 millimeter travel Blackthorn 29er trail bike that they say is built for riding anywhere with confidence, which is why I'm gonna take it to Rampage. If Rampage wasn't canceled, I would have taken it to Rampage. I guess I'll just do trail riding instead. Let's talk about suspension first and you're gonna find a split pivot system on the back of this Salsa. That's from Dave Weagle, and Salsa's been using this for ages, and what it is, is a concentric rear axle pivot that allows it to rotate, I mean concentrically, right around the rear axle. The rear shock delivers its 140 millimeters of travel via a rocker link and a clevis that wraps around the seat tube. Now there is one interesting detail on here that Salsa's doing, and it's let them use the same front and rear triangles for this bike and the longer travel Cassidy. By switching out the rocker link and the clevis and the shock, they can go from 140 millimeters on this to 165 millimeters on the Cassidy. One last thing to talk about on suspension, Salsa has included a geometry adjustment system up in here, a flip chip system. So you flip that and it steepens the bike. Now we'll get to those numbers in a minute. First, let's get into some frame details. Salsa has clicked all the trail bike boxes with this all new frame, including a place to strap a tube. You'll find this slot up here that you could feed the strap through, and they're definitely not the first to do this, but there is a rubber guard there to keep the tube and any tools that you might have attached to it from scuffing the frame. You'll also find a whole bunch of threaded holes on the top tube and on the top of the down tube for all sorts of storage and water bottle. You're also gonna get a threaded bottom bracket and a set of ISCG tabs around that bottom bracket shell. Cable routing is all internal on the carbon frames and it's passed through. So you should just be able to push it through and it comes out the other end without you having to lose your temper. Rear hub spacing, well that's Superboost 12 by 157 and that lets Salsa run a really short 432 millimeter rear end. Those short chain stays those are aluminum on all frames. There's also some nice frame protection, including a flap in front of that main pivot to keep rocks from getting jammed in between the frame and the chain stays. Let's talk geometry now. And I'm five foot 10. This is a large size Blackthorn with the roomy 490 millimeter reach. Up front, 64.6 degrees and the seat angle, 76.5. Now those numbers are all in the low slack setting that I know you're gonna put it in and leave it in. But if you did wanna lift it up a little bit, you can steepen the head angle by a third of a degree and the bottom bracket height by four millimeters, which is about this much. <laughs> and I've already mentioned those short chain stays, they're 432 millimeters across the board on all sizes. Next up, let's go over the model range. And this is the Fancy Pants most expensive Blackthorn but you don't need to spend that much. It all starts at $3,200 American for an aluminum frame, 12 speed Dior components, rock shock suspension, and proper Maxxis tires. Unlike most brands, Salsa actually offers the aluminum frame and shock on their own for 2,100 bucks. So you can build up your own aluminum Blackthorn if you didn't want to break the bank. If you want carbon fiber, frame and shock, $3,200. This very purple one, it's the top tier model that comes with an X01 drivetrain. It goes for $7,500. You're also getting factory level suspension from Fox, including that 160 millimeter travel 36 with the grip two damper, four piston code RSC brakes, and a set of carbon fiber wheels from Reynolds. All right, that's all the details and all the numbers on Salsa's new Blackthorn. Let's talk about how this thing rides. Okay, let's talk setup first. And as with all the bikes, we installed our control tires. That's a Maxxis DHF on the front inflated to 21 PSI 
and a dissector on the back at 23 PSI with no inserts. There's a Fox 36 fork with a Grip 2 cartridge, and that's set up pretty much to the recommended settings for my weight. Now, as far as rear suspension goes, I went anywhere from 25% sag to 35% sag. They all worked pretty good, but I settled on 30% for the majority of my riding. What's the story when it comes to climbing when you're on the Blackthorn? Well, if you're talking trail bikes, the Blackthorn is definitely on the bigger end of the scale. It has a fair bit of travel, especially up front, and it's a fairly long bike. And it feels like that when you're on the trail. The more technical the climbing, the more time and the more room you need to give yourself. So those tight switchbacks, you might be going a little bit wider and you might be taking a little bit slower line and planning ahead more. It feels like there's a lot of bike ahead of that bottom bracket and not much behind it. So in the tightest sections, it can actually feel like you're pivoting on the rear end around stuff. And when you take that approach to the trail, it works quite well. You have a lot of traction and you could get up all sorts of stuff. As far as pedaling performance goes, well, that feels a bit pedestrian on the Blackthorn, to be honest, especially compared to bikes like that Specialized Stump Jumper and the new Giant with the live valve suspension that, well, it's almost cheating in a way. Now the bike does have a pedal assist switch. And if you're the kind of rider who likes to get out of the saddle and work hard, you're gonna to wanna to reach down and flick that to the closed setting so the bike doesn't move a whole lot. When you're in the saddle and just spinning, it's a reasonably calm bike, but it does feel active. There's no climb switch on that Fox fork, obviously, and that sort of defines the bike's climbing characteristics. You know, bikes like that Mojo, it uses a Fox fork that has a Fit4 cartridge in it with a pedal assist switch. So when you're out of the saddle, you can just reach down, flick the switch, you can flick the rear shock if you want and the bike turns into a rocket ship. On this bike, you only have that on the back, not the front. So again, all the more reason to stay seated and just spin up the climbs. So overall, not a bad climber, but it's definitely not in the sporty trail bike category. This is for somebody who isn't super concerned with getting to the top, they just wanna get there. All right, you've got yourself to the top of the mountain. You're gonna come back down. What's the story with Barney here? Well, Salsa has done a really impressive job of combining capability without losing that trail bike feel. So where bikes like the Giant and Specialized and the Ibis, they definitely still have a bit of that traditional light, uh, quick handling, nimble trail bike feel to them. The Salsa has more capability built into it and a lot of it comes from that geometry and that 160 millimeter travel Fox 36 fork. The front end and those angles let you go into things much faster than you would on a traditional trail bike and they give you the confidence to ride things that, I mean, wouldn't be possible just a few years ago on a so-called trail bike. But when things are tight and slow, the Salsa doesn't turn into a cruise ship. The bike has a snappy, energetic feel to it that really gives it life through tight corners, especially when you're trying to go fast through them. If you're somebody that likes to go into a corner real fast and have that back end snap around, well, this will do it. Salsa has done a really good job of creating a bike that's still fun when it's slow and picky choosy and you gotta kinda really think about where you're going, but this thing, it could also be your cruise ship when it is time to just lean back and go right through stuff. It's a great balance of slow speed technical handling and high speed stability. What about the bike's 140 millimeters of split pivot suspension? Well, that's impressive as well, especially early on in the travel. It's very, very slippery and I think that helps with traction a lot. And aside from the P-Train with its coil sprung King Creek shock, the back of the Salsa was definitely the most active and forgiving. So if you want something to cover ground a little quicker and maybe not feel quite as big on the trail, you can do that with the Salsa. At the other end of the stroke, it's great as well. I used full travel, but nothing hard and you have room in there to put an extra volume spacer if you're a bigger rider and you're bottoming out more often.
Let's talk about timing next, and we're gonna cover climbing first. The salsa had the fourth fastest timing climb. It was about 30 seconds behind the fastest bike. Again, that was the Giant Trans X with its live valve suspension. The climb was mixed. Half of it was smooth single track, and the other half was pretty technical and pretty tight with some rock faces, and it was fairly wet as well. As far as descending goes, it was third out of five, 12 seconds back from the P train, two seconds back from the specialized stump jumper. Our time descent trail is representative of what I think a trail bike should be able to handle. There's definitely a few tricky, steep, rocky and rooty sections on there, but also a whole lot of traversing and some tricky corners as well. Let's talk about component highs and lows next. First thing, this Fox 36 with the Grip 2 damper, We've covered this lots before, but I'm gonna mention it again. This thing is so damn impressive. You don't need all these dials and you're probably never gonna touch them after you get the fork feeling how you want to, but they are effective. I'm also a real big fan of how the Code RSC brakes feel. All the adjustments mean you can get them dialed in exactly how you want and there's plenty of modulation. Another thing to mention, this 170 millimeter Trans X dropper post I'm from a time when dropper posts, well, they would work for about a week and then they just stopped working, but you needed them to ride. That's how important they are. This one, well, all of them now, they just keep on going. Let's talk lows now and, well, I don't really have a whole lot to complain about, so I'm gonna be kind of nitpicky here and it's that extended range SRAM cassette with the 52 tooth large cog. It's not the shift itself that's the issue, it's the difference. It's 10 teeth. If I needed the lower ratio that the 52 tooth provides, I'd far prefer to just go to a smaller chain ring. That 10 tooth jump, well, the shift is fine. There's such a difference in ratio that I feel like I go from moving to not moving as soon as I shift into it. It's time to talk pros and cons. Well, I've only got one pro, but it's a big one. Salsa has managed to make the Blackthorn incredibly well-rounded. If you wanna go ride some smooth, fun flow trails, well, this'll do it just fine. You're gonna have a blast. If you wanna ride something super gnarly, if you wanna point yourself down some sketchy ass rock roll that's past vertical and full of pointy rocks at the bottom, it'll do that too. Salsa has made this thing incredibly capable on all sorts of trails. Okay, cons, and I've got two for you. The first one, well, it's kind of trivial. It's a lot of purple, isn't it? You can't get this model in any other color, and I had a ton of people ask me questions about this bike and comment that it was so purple. Even the fork decals are purple, purple everywhere. The other thing, well, it's not necessarily a con. It's a fairly large trail bike when it comes to travel. That 160 millimeter fork on the front, the 64.6 .6 degree head angle. Well, Salsa has done a crazy impressive job of making this bike fun on really easy, simple terrain. Riders should still know that this definitely isn't the kind of trail bike that you would buy to do your 50, 60, 70 kilometer rides on smooth trails. So where does that put us with the Blackthorn? Well, most riders probably know Salsa better for their touring and curly bar bikes, but the truth is they clearly know how to put together a killer trail bike as well. It's incredibly well-rounded, but it's also extremely capable on the outer edge of what a trail bike should be used for. So that's it for the Blackthorn. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming field test video reviews.